thank you for joining us uh, today for our episode on proper nutrition. I'm so excited to have with me Vicki Clementeris. Vicki and I know each other from working together in the ICU, and she is just a pleasure to work with and very knowledgeable. So I really wanted her to come on the show and really tell you about how we can create healthy eating habits. So thank you for coming, Vicki. I'm so happy to have you. Vicki is also, me. yeah, she's a certified dietitian and she graduated top of her class at FIU. So we've got an expert on our hands. <laughs> so Vicki, Elena, let's get started. Um, how would you define proper nutrition? Sure. So proper nutrition really should be pretty simple. Um, you know, having whole grains, um, balancing your diet, eating, um, you know, lots of fruits and vegetables, lean proteins, um, you know, lean, uh, dairy is okay. People, you know, are afraid of dairy, having adequate fat into your diet, all of these things. I mean, really anything can be um, part of a, a healthy diet. Um, really, as far as proper nutrition is concerned, we look at adequate hydration as well. Um, staying hydrated is also very important um, for, you know, our body to function on a cellular level, for our organs to function, to reduce constipation, um, you know, so we really look at that. And from not really a nutrition, I would say, food standpoint, um, staying um, or adequate sleep is really, really important, right, because our body doesn't function well when we are sleep deprived. So um, getting adequate sleep as able exercising um, or moving your body as you as it feels good it shouldn't feel like punishment and then really decreasing um, your stress levels is really important just for the whole body to work and to really absorb all of that good nutrition yeah i think that's so important nikki i mean when we talk about being healthy you know really incorporating all of these things and one doesn't stand alone um you know you can have proper nutrition but if you're not really you know Get, getting moving, you know, if you're still living a sedentary lifestyle could really make a difference. So, you know, that's, it's very important to incorporate all of those things. Exactly. Um, yeah. So what would you say for a beginner, you know, what is the best way for them to start eating healthy? Yeah. I mean, for a beginner, I would just say start small, um, start somewhere. Um, we recommend setting what we call SMART goals. So they're um, specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and timely. Um, so with that being said, if you're setting these goals that you can actually achieve, the likelihood of you succeeding is so much higher, right? If you put yourself on this crazy restrictive diet and you go all in, it usually lasts maybe a couple weeks or a month. And then you're like, forget it. I'm done. I'm over it. Um, and then what happens is, is we start binging on those foods that we've once restricted. So I think starting somewhere and starting small is definitely the key to it. So it could be as simple as, um, you know, putting vegetables in your omelet or adding, um, adding vegetables into your pasta, having a side of fruit with your breakfast. Um, it doesn't have to be an all or nothing type of lifestyle. No, that's great. I think that that's so important. A lot of the um, reasons I think people fail is that restrictive mentality, you know, feeling like they have to restrict things in order to really achieve their goals and be healthy. And so I'm glad that you mentioned that because I think that that's such a key takeaway. You don't have to restrict things. You really need to just incorporate these healthy foods into your day-to-day -day routine. So exactly. um, that's great. So what are, I mean, what are the three healthy eating habits? And I think you've touched on this. If I, you know, wanted to make three healthy habits a day, um, what would be those three that you would recommend? Sure. So three things that I think are really important just to like maintain an overall healthy lifestyle would be hydration. So that's something that I kind of touched on before. Um, it's really important to stay hydrated and I usually recommend anywhere from two to three liters a day for most people. I mean, depending on where you live, your exercise levels, how much fiber you're eating in a day, um, but really staying hydrated. And just a, a quick key, like rule of thumb is looking at your urine. Like what, what color is it? Is it dark? Is it golden? Is it clear? If it's clear, you're, you're in the go. If it's on the darker side, you probably need to maybe cut back on the coffee and increase a little bit in the water. Um, and then making sure you're getting adequate fiber into your diet. So fiber are things like your whole grains, um, your legumes, your fruits, your vegetables. Um, fiber really helps promote satiety. It really helps to regulate our blood sugar levels. Um, fiber actually, you know, feeds our good bacteria or our gut microbiota and really 
helps to um, promote a good immune system. Um, and, you know, so many fibrous fruits and vegetables and whole grains are also known to be very high in antioxidants, which actually help prevent, you know, against certain types of cancers and help reduce the risk of certain, um, you know, chronic disease, which I'm pretty sure that is what everyone is trying to prevent, right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So one of the things yeah. that I talked about, you know, earlier was that being healthy is really all of the organ systems working together um, mm -hmm. in an optimal way. And I think it exactly. just really sums up how proper nutrition helps that helps us achieve that. Um, yeah, definitely. With, you know, the immune cells and the GI tract and absorbing the vitamins that your cells need. I mean, I think that when people really can understand that and understand that the, what they're eating is really making their body function. Um, mm -hmm. in, a, in the most optimal way, it's going to make a difference. And, you know, exactly. I always like to share is when I, um, you know, my healthy lifestyle change really started when I first had my first um, pregnancy. And I realized, you know, whatever I put into my mouth needed to have nutritional value for my baby. And that's really it really changed my life. It really was something that helped me incorporate healthy foods. And I wasn't really restrictive. I just started to eventually not really want things that um, weren't providing that nutritional value. And right. So it's probably because you were providing that nourishment without that restriction. So you're, you were giving yourself the freedom to, you know, nourish your, ba your body, nourish your, your baby that was growing, but then also enjoy the foods that you really wanted because you know you can have them too because you are nourishing your body. Exactly, exactly. And I think that's the mentality. So, you know, one of the things that I hear and the biggest excuses that I hear is that we don't have enough time to eat healthy. What are your thoughts on that? And how can we avoid making that excuse? Yeah, so I know I hear that quite often in, um, in my practice. I've heard that with patients. Um, you know, oh, there's no time. Everybody has time. Um, everyone has a busy life. Everyone either is juggling um, a family, a job, two jobs. Um, you know, there's always something that could get in the way. But, you know, nutrition doesn't have to be complicated. It's not like we're asking you to, um, you know, make this five hour meal. It's not Thanksgiving every single day, right? <laughs> it's, it's picking up snacks that you know are maybe grab and go that are healthy like you can keep yogurt and fruit on hand you can keep a cheese or cottage cheese on hand um you can keep um cucumbers or crudite on hand like all of these things are are quick and they're nourishing um you know and one of the things that i practice in my um on my instagram and also with my clients is teaching them especially for busy families as i too am a busy mom you know meals can be done in 30 minutes. You know, you don't need, you really don't need all day to make a, a busy meal. I will and not I think cook that, anything that takes longer than 30 minutes, Vicki. No, and I know you're a busy mom. <laughs> it's too. impossible. You have, you have three kids. It's literally impossible. Yeah, like, absolutely. especially when you have little ones running around, it's like you're worried about what they're doing and, you know, whatever. And even a tip that I would suggest for busy parents is get them involved if, they're, if it's age appropriate. And, and the crazy thing is, is that kids will actually be more inclined to eating the foods that they're preparing. So maybe they don't necessarily eat certain fruits and vegetables, but if we're allowing them to pick them and allowing them, you know, to prepare some things, it could be as simple as putting the food in the bowl. Um, you know, they're going to get excited. They're going to want to look at it and feel it and touch it and, and have them help. Toddlers, kids love to help. That's all they want to do. So if you have kids, you know, get them involved. They'll help cut the process down. If you're, you know, if you're single and it's just you, you know, you can find the time. Um, it's definitely doable. Speaking of that, actually, what are your thoughts about eating out? I am absolutely okay with eating out. I mean, there are healthy options everywhere, um, you know, but it doesn't have to mean that if you are going out to eat, if you, you know, if you see a salad on the menu, if that's not what you want, you don't have to order it because it's like the quote unquote healthy option. Um, you know, you can, you can ask for a whole wheat bun if you want. You can opt out the, you know, maybe the large fry and get a small fry and add a vegetable or a side salad. Um, I think that eating out can, especially because so many people do it nowadays, because 
um, you know, with our busy schedules, with our busy lifestyle, sometimes it is hard when you come home, you have to pick up your kids from practice or from school or whatever. Sometimes it is easier to grab a meal on the go. On occasion, that's okay. I mean, it's like there's always healthy options on pretty much everyone's menu because everybody knows that people are trying to lead these, lead these more healthful lifestyles, right? So there, there's definitely options for everyone. That's so great. No, it's good to know. Um, you know, I think that you're, you're, you're hitting it on the head with um, not restricting yourself. I think that that's mm-hmm. the biggest reason, you know, that people um, don't want to uh, start healthy, start making healthy choices. You know, um, mm-hmm. it's too hard. Um, I, you know, I can't do this. And so they do a lot of these yo-yo diets and, you know, these things. And, and I think, you know, you know, you feel the same way I do is that I really hate that word diet. I think it, it, it in itself is restricting. Um, it has the word die for a reason. <laughs> it's torture. That's a good way to put it. That's so true. And yeah. um, so really these lifestyle modifications and, and I think being kind to yourself, you know, when you do make that choice, you know, Hey, um, uh, one of the things that I do is, you know, if I have like a nice pasta meal, you know, I try to not have, if I'm planning it in that evening, you know, I may not eat, you know, a waffles or something like that in the morning, I probably will opt for, you know, something different. Um, and that's just, you know, for me. Um, but I think that people as they go out through the, the day, like when you make those nutritious choices, and you really are nourishing your body, you know, be kind to yourself and rewarding as well. I think that that's such a great, you know, way to um, incorporate sticking to those healthy um, lifestyle changes in a proper diet, a proper nutrition. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like so, um, you know, and when I'm discussing making these healthy lifestyle um, habits, one of the, the, the components is knowledge. And I think you've really given us a lot of that and basic knowledge on what it means to have a proper nutrition and some of these tools, like you said, so hydrating, um, I think you also mentioned, um, you know, making, um, making it a balance to balancing the diet. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I also like that you had discussed, you know, what just making those alterations as you go along, even with eating Mm -hmm. out. So I guess what I wanted to say is, um, when you talk about, um, in summary, what are some of the, what are those three things? I know you mentioned hydration, um, other things. Yeah, so hydration, adequate fiber, and then balancing your lifestyle, right? So balancing as able. So if you're balancing your plate more often than not, you're going to feel satisfied. You're going to feel full. You're not going to want to crash and binge on on chips and crackers and ice cream and cookies because your body is getting everything that it needs. So if you're eating a carbohydrate, if you're eating protein and fiber, Um, and fat at all of your meals, you're hitting all of the main components, right? So your body's not going to then later on in the evening search for them. I get this question and comment so often is that, you know, people are maybe skipping out on um, certain food groups, like they'll do low fat or low carb, or, you know, maybe just bulk up on a whole bunch of fiber and have like a big salad with a little bit of protein on it. And then an hour later, they're Spanish, they're dizzy, they're hungry, and they don't know why, because they're like, oh, well, I just quote, ate healthy. Well, you did, but you missed a couple food groups. You, if you had a low fat salad dressing, you need the fat for satiety, you need the fat for your hormone function. Um, if you forgot your carbs, your carbs are energy for your brain, your carbs are what keeps the body going. So it's really important that you don't forget anything, because if by the end of the day, the body hasn't gotten it, the body's going to want to, you know, to compensate and how we do that. In order to get quick, quick digesting glucose, sugar, essentially, we're going to go for the fastest digesting food. So that's where you start binging on your potato chips, you go for tons of ice cream, you go for cookies. And it's not to say that you can't have these things. But when, when you're eating properly, you're going to only want maybe just a little bit and not want to eat a whole sleeve because you're like, I'm starving. I'm still hungry. Well, because you haven't nourished yourself. You haven't given yourself enough calories throughout the day. That's great. No, absolutely. The fiber is really important as well um, Mm -hmm. because it makes you feel full, right? So that fullness, you know, you say that, you know, like for example, when someone sits at a restaurant and orders that salad, you know, if that's Mm -hmm. not really what you wanted, then you're not going to feel nourished. You're not going to be exactly. 
Um, so I think that that's really important as well. Um, so, you know, like I, if you want the burger, it's fine to eat the burger. Mm -hmm. It's totally fine. Maybe your body needs a little bit more protein. Maybe your body's saying, Hey, I, I'm feeling a little bit anemic. I need some iron. I need some good quality iron. You can have a burger. It's totally fine. Those vegetables aren't necessarily going to give you that fast digesting absorbable iron like a burger would. So it's okay to listen to your body and, and really give it what it needs. Because yeah, I don't think it's not only okay. I think it's it's essential. I think that of course, um, you know, mindfulness. This and this is something else I talk about when we talk about being healthy. You know, practicing mindfulness in in every time that you eat. And you know, I've even caught myself um, saying, "Wow, I'm hungry." And and, and kind of like scavenging around to eat something. And of then course. I always drink a, a glass of water actually before I eat anything. And then I'm like, oh, I am really hungry. <laughs> just to make sure that I'm not actually thirsty. So just yeah. that mindfulness is so important as well. And then that will help you kind of incorporate that balance, right? When you look sure. at those things that you're putting on your plate, making sure that you do have all those food groups and that you're incorporating them into your diet. Now, yeah. I personally don't eat a lot of simple carbs. Um, I don't really enjoy them. I don't, it's just something that I've changed in my, in my healthy, in my lifestyle. But, you know, mm -hmm. I think, I like that you say that it's okay that you can have mm -hmm. that, you know, bowl of white rice if you want it, you know, absolutely. So that that's a really key factor. Um, and I guess, you know, really to sum it up, what would you recommend, you know, um, for someone that's just beginning that wants to get started? You know, I know that you have a, a uh, you have a virtual practice and that you do have see clients, you know, do is a consultation with a nutritionist. What is that like? And, and what would you recommend? Yeah. I mean, I would definitely recommend if, if it's something that you want and, you know, whether it be breaking away from like your years of fad dieting, or if it's just maybe a new diagnosis that you, you know, that your physician gave you and you don't know how to, how to tackle it, don't do it alone, right? That's what we're here for. We're not the food police. We want to help our patients. That's why we went to school for so many years. I mean, most dietitians go to school for at least six years. Um, and we're very well versed on metabolism and the way the body works and you know, we really want to help. That's why we're here. We dedicate our lives to helping other people, you know, live the best life that they can live a healthy and fulfilling life without being restricted. So I think it's really important that if it's something that you you're seeking, definitely seek help. Let us help you, um, you know, make these better lifestyles. I think that I might have touched on this earlier, but people to be a little bit afraid of dietitians because they're afraid that we're going to make them eat you know, seven pounds of kale and um, chicken without flavor. <laughs> that is not the case. You know, like we will, we're okay. We eat potatoes. I promise. Like we, we eat rice. We eat all types of food. We love food so much. We studied the science of it for, for years and years and years. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so come to us, seek us, let us help you. And, and the one piece of advice that I can give um, clients, especially if they're looking for a dietitian, it's, your goals and your, your, you know, your changes and your lifestyle expectations and things like that are not going to be met with one session. You cannot change years of bad habits or years of restriction or binging or, or, um, you know, yo-yo dieting in one session. You need, it needs time. It's, it's something that you have to learn. Um, it's a process. So I would say have patience. Um, and really invest in yourself and invest the time so that, you know, we can help you better yourself. That's wonderful. I mean, I, I completely agree with that, you know, as a physician, you know, and I think physicians in general, and I hope this is changing, you know, in our um, future uh, graduates. And, you know, um, obviously, that's why I'm here and want to educate people on, you know, nutrition and healthy lifestyle uh, changes. But, you know, I took probably, you know, one semester of nutrition. So, mm -hmm. you know, I really didn't get that great background that someone like you has. And that's obviously why we work hand in hand with you guys in the hospital. But, you know, yeah. something I've noticed is, you know, we're failing, um, you know, and preventative medicine and really educating and helping our patients and our society understand what it means to be healthy, how to incorporate proper nutrition. And I think mm -hmm. that, you know, you, we really need to tap into people like you um, and use your, um, use you as a, a resource. resource. So, right. I, you know, I really recommend Yeah. And I, <clears throat> yeah, no. And I think, um, you know, I think as especially, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but as a physician, I know that 
patients have such high expectations and expect the physician to have all the questions or, you know, be able to answer all the questions. And when it comes to nutrition, you know, I hear it often. Well, my doctor said for me to do this for nutrition, you know, like so many doctors will say, oh, stop eating carbs or stop eating fat. And instead of, you know, saying like, that's not my field, you know, maybe seek a dietitian. you know, it's almost like they... Of course, they hold the physician to the highest expectation because, you know, you guys went through so much school and are so incredibly knowledgeable. Um, yeah. But I think it's okay for, um, you know, physicians to also use the resource because we want to help. We want to help that patient lower their A1C. We want them to get their blood sugar. We want like under control. We want their blood pressure to be well controlled. We want their renal function to improve and not progress to CKD5. We want it to get better. Right. So by utilizing us and, and resourcing out, you know, outsourcing us, like we can help the patient together get there with medication, with diet. I mean, diet is not the, the answer to everything. We, as you know, genetics and certain other factors come into play, but together we can, we can help improve it or maybe control it a little bit better. So I think Absolutely. that we, we can be such a team if we just resource one another a little bit better. Yeah, no, I, I completely agree. And I, I recommend it all of the time for sure. Um, to a lot of patients, you know, that I encounter and, you know, even before they get ill or before they have a medical condition, you know, you really mm -hmm. have to understand. And hopefully, you know, as we have now that we have, you know, social media and we have so many resources at our fingertips, you know, making sure that we're using knowledgeable resources, you know, people that really know what they're talking about and, you of know, to guide us um, yeah. into making those changes. So I really appreciate yeah. what you do. It's so important in keeping um, our society healthy healthy. And Thank I hope you. that more and more people will tap into that resource. Um, mm -hmm. I know that they can reach out to you at Nutrition by Vicky, V-I-C-A-I-E yeah. on Instagram. And, you know, they can direct message you. And I hope a lot of people will. I hope that people will seek out, you know, and also if you follow her, you get some great, great recommendations and recipes, which is amazing. Um, but I can't thank you enough for having you on here. You know, it's just been so great to share this time and um, share this time with others. And hopefully thank we can you. empower people's health and empower yeah. themselves to have that proper nutrition. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you so much, Vicki. Thank you for having me. Yeah.